This is Mario with Mia Microflight and in this video you are viewing one of the very very early Falcon helicopters that I designed a while back. This is what uh, became known as also the chicken-legged helicopter and why was it called the chicken-legged? Because of the particular landing gear that it uh, is installed on this uh, very uh, simple early micro helicopter. Now if you want to you know go back in history uh, to back in the year 2000-2002 when I was designing these uh, little micro helicopters um, I was also selling these in kit form to people that uh, found this stuff interesting now over the years and it seems that uh, in the year uh, 2017 that we are at helicopters, radio control helicopters, micro in particular has uh, died down in view of the uh, more popular FPV uh, drones and uh, just uh, quadcopters in general but I wanted to bring this uh, back into view because uh, you know there's a certain uh, uh, nostalgia that uh, goes along with these uh, micro helicopters especially the very early ones that I was designing and, um, and also the, the smaller ones uh, you know the palm size no matter how much I have flown quadcopters you know I still come back to these little tiny helicopters because they provide a certain level of uh, excitement and uh, you know the, the control field is, uh, is totally different than your quadcopter. Quadcopters are you know very locked in, uh, in stability nowadays you know with the uh, fast processors that they embed in the flight controllers. It, back at the, uh, when I designed these you know we didn't have the uh, flight controllers that we have today uh, you know and so we had uh, just your typical rate uh, gyros and if I turn this around you can see some of those components here for those of you that may find this uh, interesting and that may, may not have been uh, around when I was uh, designing these helicopters uh, back in the day but basically you have here this little electronic uh, um, a gyro uh, this is just a basic gyroscope that were sold by um, uh, GWS and um, um, I don't know there were some other companies that were selling this uh, but GWS uh, comes to mind here because I was buying a lot of GWS gyros at that time and removing the case the plastic case and, and just using the ele electronic circuit as you see it here and so that along with you know, some other components that were popular back in the day uh, such as the receivers these little tiny receivers you, you can barely see the receiver but the receiver is right underneath there and you can see the antenna this is a just a this is before uh, 2.4 gigahertz and you can see the antenna just wrapped around there around the leg to provide a sort of a, a loading coil and the antenna was routed at the back of the the, the the skid here so this is back in the day when we were using you know before 2.4 gigahertz uh, became uh, popular so this goes back a, a while back and I just dug this out of my shelves here because I wanted to do this video I've been wanting to do a video to talk about these things because it seems to me that these things have been forgotten I mean I see a lot of stuff on the internet and I try to search for micro helicopters and it seems that as the years have gone by these things have been disappearing little by little um, I mean I'm very fond of the uh, the larger micro helicopters that uh, were available back in uh, 2000 uh, I don't know maybe 2005 I think it was when the 24 inch size rotor basic uh, fixed pitch came came out and uh, and even those are have disappeared and you see more of the little toy ones so I wanted to bring this out and, and see if I can revive that interest in, in people this is just one example I mean there's so many so many other designs that were done back in the day and uh, Mia Microflight has been part of that history in, in fact we started doing this little micro bomb size and sub micro helicopters uh, before any companies uh, caught on and came aboard that that, uh, that frenzy that, that was happening back in the year 2000 uh, around 2005 so I wanted to bring that out and, and talk about these things here that may be of interest to some viewers and like I said I if I can revive this uh, at, at least the um, from a, a nostalgic point of view uh, great if not then you know it's just another video uh, for, for people to see but anyway this particular one is very interesting because of the landing gear as I was mentioning this is this was uh, called the uh, the chicken legged helicopter and um, 
At the time when I designed this helicopter, you know, I was making all sorts of things, all sorts of helicopters, just going crazy with frames. I mean, I did uh, so many frames at that time, and I was selling them as well as in kit form, you know, for the micro and the uh, and as upgrades to other helicopters that were coming on board, you know, from other companies that needed uh, beefier parts and, and, and better components. So it, this is the time when I started doing a lot of this stuff. And this particular landing gear is a molded landing gear um, part that I had provisions here for a socket for basically just two carbon rods. Very, I, I wanted to keep this very simple and that's how this came about. Um, you can see here that the frame itself is, is very simplistic. This is a one piece here uh, and um, I did a mold for this to injection mold this uh, in-house here using an a injection molding machine that I customized you know, to do these, these things. Uh, these were not done in big machines. A lot of people, when I was doing this, thought that I was doing this in, uh, in large injection molding machines, commercial types, and actually weren't. I did this on a tabletop uh, machine that I customized to do uh, semi-automatic uh, injection molding. And uh, it was quite a process, you know, I mean, I learned to do injection molding on that machine just by trial and error and just by tweaking the machine and learning as, as I was going along. So there were, there were a lot of growing pains that, that took place, you know, as I was uh, learning and making these things. But this is one of the more refined pieces of uh, injection molded plastic that I did for these helicopters. You'll notice also that this one has a ring here. And this is all uh, very particular to the MIA design uh, approach uh, of doing uh, just in do, or doing products in general, you know, I like to force myself, you know, to do things that have not done before. And when I was doing this at the time, there, there was doing that I was doing these particular parts. Uh, there was nothing like that on, the, you know, on the market. So I had to come up with these things not only to keep the parts, um, keep the part uh, manufacturing and control in house, but also to provide me a, you know, a practical and very simple and cost-effective way to make these in kit forms for people that were finding this uh, interesting. Uh, and so a lot of these uh, parts, you know, the injection molded pieces such as this ring here, this is a very particular ring that has, uh, that is molded with uh, two sockets that pivot on two, um, that pivot on two ball type links. So that pivots right there and that ring is attached to this fiberglass single piece uh, composite uh, fiberglass fly bar. You can see my name is embedded there, and, and I had these these screws here, these three holes with, uh, to provide uh, tip weights. So the screws act as tip weights. So that's that's how this came about. And of course, you know, you, I have the uh, the flex plate right on top of the uh, the blades, and, and with these additional little pieces here that provide a clamp for the blades. So all that uh, you know was uh, was done as um, as I was designing these. Uh, the, these products right below this this particular one has a fiberglass um, swash plate and you can see the the part right right there let me see if I can focus in on, on those parts so this particular size was done you know to bring to the market a compact helicopter that everybody could enjoy in, in the comfort of their their home and in the backyard and it then required you know you to lug or carry a bunch of equipment you know to the field or you know, have to do with the uh, complexities of a, of a nitro gas type uh, larger helicopter. Uh, getting back to the uh, particular design of this model, um, you can see the the application of a mixing system here with these two servos at the front. Now this was done, as I was saying, way before E-Flight, Wakira, and any other company was doing any similar work. Uh, E-Flight, Wakira, and all these companies that started making uh, uh, micro, sub-micro, and went to also making pound-sized helicopters like we were doing, uh, came many, many years after I was already doing these things. I mean, this goes back to before 2000, um, when I was exp experimenting with the, the micro helicopter. And I sold, you know, s some of these designs in an earlier uh, format to uh, people that were following me in... Um, via AOL back at the time, you know, when AOL got started. So this goes back a, a while back, and some people may not know this. So this is part of Mia Microfly history, so this is one of the reasons I, I, I'm also, you know, doing these Mix. videos. Let me go back to the link system here. This is a mixing uh, feature here, which I also employ in the um, radio control uh, auto gyros, and 
uh, micro lights and, and even some ultra lights. What the mixing does is basically allows you to use your aileron and elevator in a mix format so that you have control of pitch and you have control of roll. Now because this is a helicopter and the helicopters if you uh, do a little research and find out how the um, how the helicopter works uh, you know with a Hiller system this is a Hiller, Hiller, kind of a bell Hiller system now the Hiller uh, system employed uh, paddles you know to control by, by tilting the pedal you control the position of the rotor in reference to the helicopter and that's how you affect uh, forward back left and right motion the employment of a bell system employs you know tip weights at the at the end and so this is kind of a mixture between a bell and a Hiller by means of uh, employing the paddles with tip weights at uh, at the ends you can i mean you can go online and find more on, on that i don't need to go too deep into that because everything's on the internet uh, as far as that that is concerned so uh so that's how this uh this system is uh control um the uh the main motor is uh sits right at the back here and you can see these motors were also made by GWS and I'm using some of the very very early uh, motors that were produced uh, by GWS uh, the very first uh, brushless motors in fact that were coming out from that company so I'm using one uh, here uh, and I'm using a smaller version of that at the tail end and these like I said were one of the very first ones they came out at that time and so because this was uh, one of the very first helicopters that I was designing and I needed equipment you know to to do these things and this is what's what was available at that time so you can see these little tiny motors these, these are both brushless motors and, and this is like I said way before any of the uh, bigger companies started doing anything similar so basically this is a working helicopter this uh, model works out of a uh, small uh, two to three cell battery which uh, gets uh, installed underneath this little plate here and you can see it's very simplistic I mean the plate uh, the, the the way this was done uh, part of the frame the frame the way I designed this frame has it, it's a molded part that in uh, that has provisions for two carbon rods to be inserted on the sides of the frame very similar to this uh, idea here of um, providing a socket here for a press fit socket for this carbon rod and so it has two additional sections here to embed a two millimeter carbon rod and that's what these carbon rods that you see here are for on top of that carbon rod is where you see these plates here this this fiberglass plate which has been uh, attached to the to the front section here to provide a base for all the radio control equipment and also a base for the the battery now here's the here's the here's where the battery sits and it's got a foam uh, pad here and, and this is where the, the battery used to sit and, and still sits now this one has a little stop here also made out of fiberglass to provide a stop uh, or, or basically just a guard for the uh, molded uh, gear this part in the back was also part uh, molded part of the landing gear on a um, on an aluminum mold that I designed also uh, from scratch you know to uh, mold all these parts in, in one in one shot now this uh, landing gear has a, a post that has been also molded with uh, two um, uh, openings at the top and at the bottom to house two ball bearings for the main shaft. And this particular part that supports the motor is also molded part of this landing gear to provide means for the motor now this has this this was molded also with two slots to allow the the installation of the motor to be adjusted so that you get a precise um, um, a precise um, mating with the uh, between the pinion gear and the main gear if we look at the other side of this uh, uh, part here you will also notice that I designed this with a uh, kind of a, a bracket here coming out of the um, the main post and that bracket also has a socket to uh, allow the installation of the boom this is also press fit very similar once again to the uh, skid that is inserted on the uh, on the on the strut for the landing gear the purpose of this armor here was to provide a um, base for a carbon pin 
Now you don't see that here. You may not see this in this video. I don't know if my camera's scratching this, but there's a, this is molded with a very tiny little hole there. And I'm, unfortunately I'm missing that little pin there. But there's a pin that goes, a carpet pin that I used to provide with these things that uh, would be pressed inside this little hole and that would provide uh, a uh, anti-rotation device for the swash plate. Now the idea with that pin was to also pro uh, provide that to be used with a injection molded swash plate which is not on this particular model but I did in go in into an injection molded uh, swash plate after I did this and that was the purpose of that little pin. However in this particular model I have installed a channel anti-rotation plate here and that is what's preventing the swash plate bottom section from rotating and it retains it as you you know you you work the, the, the controls here. So either way here but that's what that little arm was designed for. You know this one has gone through a little customization basically that's what I'm trying to say here. So once again uh, you know this is uh, this is the kind of stuff that uh, that was uh, done back in the, in the day and, uh, and I thought uh, I thought it would be interesting you know to talk about these things